Chemistry rocks. <laughs> Hello, my name is John Kessler, and today I'll be teaching you AP students who are watching this what you will definitely expect to see on the AP test on the subject of electrochemistry. Yeah, let's get to it. Now, if you were oblivious to it already, electrochemistry is one of the most real-life chemistry subjects there is. I mean, it's involved with this. And this. What? Why would she say something like that? Come on! And this. And also this. Ow! Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about what's going on here. Okay, first of all, electrochemistry is when it involves uh, an electric current. Because two substances are trading electrons. Now, the name of this type of reaction is called redox. And it involves two substances. Uh, a substance that is being oxidized and a substance that's being reduced. Now, when a substance loses electrons, it is being oxidized. And when a substance gains electrons, it is being reduced. Now, a good memory trick to, you know, to remember that is oil rig, which is reduction is gaining electrons. And Oxidation is losing electrons. Little memory trick right there. You should use it. So let me show you an example of oxidation and reduction in a chemical equation. So in this example, we have a redox reaction between zinc and copper. We see here that the zinc goes from zinc, you know, just by itself, to zinc 2 positive, and copper from copper to positive to just plain old copper. This tells us that the zinc is being oxidized because it lost two electrons. And it also tells us that copper is being reduced since it is less positive than it was before, thus gaining electrons. Now the oxidizing agent is the product that came from the reducing reactant. The reducing agent is the product that came from the oxidizing reactant. So in this example, we see that zinc 2 positive is the reducing agent and copper is the oxidizing agent since um, copper came from copper 2, uh, which was reduced, and zinc 2 positive came from zinc, which was oxidized. A long, long time ago, chemists discovered that you can use this transfer of electrons to power machines. So they devised this little... Um, device called a battery. Let's see what that looks like. Now this diagram that is being shown right here is the rough version of the battery called a galvanic cell. Now it consists of two different metals inside of their respected aqueous states. Now there is also a wire connecting the two metals as well as a salt bridge which we will uh, discuss later. Now what happens is that the oxidizing metal, in this case zinc right here, transfers its electrons through the wire into the reducing metal, which in this case is copper right here. Now, we call the chamber that has the oxidizing metal, this chamber right here, the anode. And we call the chamber that has the reducing metal, this chamber, the cathode. Now the oxidizing metal, when it loses electrons, it becomes an ion and it goes into the solution. So uh, we can see here that we have zinc right here, the zinc metal, and it's losing its zinc ions. So it goes out into solution, and also its electrons go out. When the metal that reduces gains electrons, it becomes a metal, and the metal ions attach to the metal itself. So we can see here uh, the copper metal, the copper ions are going into the metal, forming more of the metal, and we can see here that the electrons are also going into the solution as well. So in other words, while the reaction is happening, the metal in the anode is losing mass, and the metal in the cathode is gaining mass. So what's a good memory trick to, you know, remember that? Well, here's one. It is 
a small ox and a fat red cat. Now, a small red ox stands for anode, small, which means losing mass, and ox, which is oxidation. A fat red cat stands for fat, meaning gaining mass, red, which means reduction, and cat, which is cathode. There you go. Now let's talk about a different part of the battery. Now we talked about the two chambers and the wire, but what about this blue tube connecting the two? Uh, well, this tube is called the salt bridge, and it is quite literally a tube of a salt solution between the two metal solutions. Now its purpose is to balance the charges of each chamber so that the current will continue to flow. Now uh, let me explain and show you an example of that. Now suppose that our salt bridge has the salt potassium nitrate. So as all salts do when they're in solution, it splits apart into a positive ion and a negative ion. So in this case we have a potassium ion and a nitrate salt ion. Now here I have like a top view of the battery. So here we have the anode with its positive ions in its solution and the cathode with its negative ions in its solution because, you know, as I told you earlier, the anode produces more positive ions than the cathode. So we can suppose that the cathode has a more negative charge to it. And in between the two chambers, we have our salt potassium nitrate. So let me ask you this question. If you were the potassium ion, where would you want to go? All right, <laughs> for those that guessed right, it is, Yes, you have found it. Now, if, uh, if you were the positive ion, you would want to go to where it's more negative, right here, right? That makes sense, right? And if you were the negative ion, you would want to go to where it's more positive, right? So the potassium ion would want to go to where the cathode is, and the negative ion would want to go where the anode is. So that, in turn, balances the charges so that we can still create a current flowing. Moving on from the components of a battery, now let's talk about some measurements that you have to know uh, before taking the AP test. And one of them is cell potential, which is measured in volts. Now the cell potential is defined as the driving force or push, so to say, of the reaction uh, wanting to occur. Now let's specifically talk about standard cell potential, which is the cell potential at standard conditions. And that's when the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius and the pressure is at one atmosphere. Now on the AP test, they will most likely want you to solve the standard cell potential of a redox equation. Now how do you do that? Well, let me show you. Now scientists came up with the list of standard cell potential half reactions for most of the substances involved with redox reactions. So here we have half reactions of different substances right here. And for each of the substances it has its uh, standard half cell potential. Just remember that the more positive, the more positive the cell potential is, the more likely it's going to reduce. And the more negative the cell potential is, the more likely it's going to oxidize. Now the standard cell potential is found by subtracting the reduction cell potential by the oxidation cell potential. And if the standard cell potential is positive, the reaction is spontaneous. Now let me show you three examples. So suppose we want to figure out the standard cell potential of the two substances, zinc and copper. Now what we would do is we would go to our list and find the substances. So let's first find copper too. So for copper 2 positive, we find that the cell potential for this substance is positive 0 
and for zinc 2 positive we find that its cell potential is negative 0 0.763 so since we know that zinc is oxidizing and copper is reducing then we can take the standard cell potentials that we found and plug them in so how we would write it is this um, positive 0 0.337 minus negative 0 0.763 and that gives us the standard cell potential of 1.0 voltage so the standard cell potential for the uh, redox equation of copper and zinc is 1.10 voltage now let's do an example from the AP review let me read it to you so according to the standard reduction potentials above which species would release electrons most readily so here we have the substances copper and iron and uh, they've already given us the standard half cell potentials so um, all we need to do is figure out what they're trying to say now according to what it says it says that the species will are releasing the electrons so what does that mean well it means that since it's releasing electrons that means it's being oxidized so we need to figure out which substance is being oxidized well how do we figure that out remember how standard cell potentials are more negative if they're being oxidized so we need to figure out which one is less positive and so we see from above that copper is less than iron so we can assume that the copper is the one being oxidized right so then how do we make our choice below with copper 2 positive copper iron 3 positive and iron 2 positive well we can rule out C and D now we need to figure out which one out of A and B is right so let's think about it if copper is being oxidized which one is more positive the copper 2 positive right so the answer is B because it would make more sense if copper is being oxidized to go from Cu to Cu2 positive right now let's do another example so on this next problem it says what is the standard cell potentials of the galvanized cell on the previous half reactions well based on the half reactions that we saw previous uh, all we have to do is to plug in to our original equation which is the standard cell potential equals the standard reduction potential minus the standard oxidation potential so all we have to do is plug in the numbers and we have our answer so since we already since we already ruled that copper is the one being oxidized and iron is the one being reduced all we have to do is plug in the numbers accordingly so based on the numbers uh, we write this 0 0.769 minus positive 0 0.337 and that gives us the answer of 0 0.432 voltage so our answer is A well even though I didn't teach you everything in electrochemistry I taught you all that you really need to know for the AP test now if you want to go more into the specifics of electrochemistry you can talk to Ms. Aiken or look in your book or look at previous AP tutorial videos you know, you know just figure out whatever works well as I said I am John Kessler and I hope you have a great day Oh my god!